thought I'd just uh, make a little video regarding the Woodley and Jake Paul fight. There's been a lot of controversy over it. I posted this clip on my Instagram. <laughs> And the comments just went crazy. People saying the fight was fake. Um, people going crazy that uh, they're making so much money. You know, these guys aren't even like high level boxers fighting for world titles and making more money than, than the guys who are. Um, yeah, lots of stuff really com coming out off the back of this. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. So, the first thing I want to address is a lot of people. A lot of fighters as well um, saying this guy, these guys don't deserve this. You know, they're making all this money. Uh, everybody's tuning in to watch. These guys do not deserve these opportunities. And I, I would disagree. I would say that these anybody who's made a name for themselves, regardless of how they've done it, yeah. So Jake Paul is a YouTuber. Um, I don't know much about his YouTube videos, but sometimes I'll go in Roman's bedroom and he'll be on there, you know, just doing pranks or whatever he does. So he he has built an audience from scratch. Yeah, he didn't he weren't just magically famous overnight. He has built that audience from scratch. Even though it's nothing to do with fighting, he's built that audience. He's got eyeballs on him, regardless of what he does. And uh, the the same I had the same conversation before about uh, Aaron Chalmers, uh, you know, the Geordie Shaw guy fighting on Bellator. It's the same thing. These guys have built their audience and they're putting on the line to fight and they could get sparked out in front of everyone, right? They are putting it on the line regardless of whether you like them or not, whether whether you think they deserve these opportunities. They have, the thing about fighting is, it's a spectator sport, right? It's about putting bums on seats. So if you can sell, Regardless of how good you are, yeah, if you can sell arenas out, if you can sell pay-per-views, you will get fights, you will get good fights. And there's a lot of good fighters out there who are good, they're, they're sick fighters, right? But because they don't promote themselves right, and they're like, oh no, I, I just want to train and fight and that's it. They will not get the opportunities that somebody who's not as good as them, but he's better on social media, who's got a better audience, better at marketing themselves, those people are the ones that are going to get opportunities. If you're a fighter and you want to make money, you need to treat it like a business. Fighting is a business, right? Promoters are going to make money out of you. You need to maximise how much money you can make, and you do that by promoting yourself, marketing yourself. It is, and you need to run your your uh, personality almost. Your your brand. You are your brand. You need to run your brand as a business, yeah? So when you're fighting, people are invested. People want to watch you. So that is the first thing is, you know, people kicking off. They, they are bringing eyeballs to the sport regardless of how good they are. does not matter. They're bringing eyeballs to the sport. They're bringing money in. And, and that's all that matters. So... You know, if you mo the people who are moaning about it saying, oh, they don't deserve it, they're the people who won't get any chances because they're not willing to graft and build a name for themselves and market themselves properly. So take it as a lesson, learn a lesson from these guys, build your name, build your brand, and you will get the rewards. Simple as that. <laughs> so on to the next bit is, the was the fight fake? Everybody's saying, the fight was fake, he took a dive. Listen, I am telling you 100% that was not a fake fight, right? You know, that knockout, people are saying, oh, this is wrist twist theory. So he twisted his wrist to tell him we were going to punch him, to tell him we were going to land that shot so he knew it was coming and it went down. Listen, that is not true. It's simple as this, yeah? Jake Paul is a big, heavy, athletic man, right? And he can punch hard. He has literally just winged a shot. And if you look at Woodley, he half had his hand up. People say, you know, he dropped his hand at that specific time and that. He half had his hand up, to be fair, but the shot clonked him and dropped him, and that's it. He were out cold. He got knocked the fuck out. It's simple as that. There's no fakery. There's no nothing dodgy going on. He hit him with a big, hard shot, and he went down. And that's as simple as it is. 
It's, I know it's a bitter pill to swallow for a lot of people, but I am telling you, that was not fake. He just got knocked out. Simple. So then we come to this. How can a YouTuber who just does a bit of boxing beat former UFC champion two times? Uh, then he beat Ben Askren before that. You know, how is he beating these guys? Well, I give you a big clue. Ben Askren, Tyron Woodley, are both welterweights. Now, I, I fought in the UFC at welterweight. I was a welterweight fighter. I'm six foot two. And I got down to 12 stone, 77, 77 kilograms. That's, that is well to weight. Now, the, these fights, these boxing fights, are at cruiserweight, okay, which is 200 pounds or 90 kilos, 91 kilos. So you're talking a 30 pound weight difference to what these guys normally compete at. So 30 pounds is massive, two stone difference. Now, I don't know what Jake Paul walks around at, but I'm guessing... He cuts down a little bit, he leans out a little bit to get to that. He's probably not going to be bulking up to get to cruiserweight. He's probably had to cut a little bit to get down. Whereas Woodley, Askren, these guys, you know, they might, maybe they're walking around at that weight, but that's not them in shape. That's not what they are competitive at, yeah? So, and I fought on the same card as Woodley once, and I stood next to him, and he's not a big guy. Compared to me, I'm like I say, I'm six foot two. You know, obviously he's thick set, but he's he's not a he's not a big guy. You know, and and, I, and I, that struck me as soon as I seen it. And that and that was back in the day. That was probably 2014 when I fought on the same cards as him. But what I'm saying is, Jake Paul is a very large, athletic man. All right, he could probably play any sport. He could play American football eye socket, he could be a basketballer, he could probably do track and field, he could probably do any of those sports and be very good, he's one of them people who's like naturally athletic, powerful, explosive, you know, he could be a, he could be a pole vaulter, I don't know, do you know, he's just one of them guys, the, the bastards, I'm telling you, but th these guys, and I get them turned up into the gym, just people who just naturally can just go to any sport and I 100% believe that Jake Paul is one of these guys like I say he's a big athletic man who can hit hard skill wise he's only just learning boxing but you know that weight differential that power that explosiveness he's got that rawness it counts for something <laughs> So another thing as well is it's Jake Paul. Obviously, he's only just started boxing. How many fights has he had now? Like four or five fights. But listen, this man has a lot of money and a lot of spare time. He doesn't have a job. You know, this guy is just paying to train with the best people. He's got all the time. He, he can train like an absolute professional. So what a normal person who's training, you know, you're not a normal fighter needs to make money for the family. You don't have to worry about that. He's got that covered. So he's literally investing all of his time and money into improving the skill. Now, if you do that with any skill, you will get huge gains very quickly. Whereas if you're just training a couple of times a week, you got to bear in mind, MMA fighters, we're not boxing every day. You might box once, twice a week. Maybe not all. Maybe you focus on Thai boxing. Maybe boxing's not even a big part of your game. So... Whereas Jake Paul has just been focusing solely on improving at boxing. And like I say, you could apply that to any skill. He could get, he could want to get better at fucking playing darts. And he invested that time and money into darts. He would be really good at darts. He's, you can apply it to anything. But like I say, he's got the time, the money. So he's going to be improving at a super fast rate. And he doesn't actually look bad when you watch him. You know, he's not... He don't look like he's like a white collar fighter. He looks like he is improving every fight. He is getting better and he's doing so very quickly because of the time and the money that he's got. And also, he's a very smart guy, a bit like Mayweather. Now, Mayweather is a superior boxer. He's a super skilled, one of the most skilled boxers on the planet. But Mayweather is also a very, very, very smart businessman. And 
I'm not taking anything away from him, but all of his fights, he chose to fight the right opponent at the right time. He is a master tactician. And, and Jake Paul is coming from a similar angle where he hasn't got the skills, but he's very good at selecting the right opponents at the right time. And uh, yeah, it'll continue to shock people, I think. Um, obviously, the Tommy Fury thing, this is the next thing. Can he beat Tommy Fury? <laughs> now, originally, I would have said Tommy Fury will smash him to pieces completely. I couldn't wait for that fight. I still can't wait for that fight because now I actually think that it's kind of a level playing field. So Tommy is... Tommy's come, obviously comes from the Fury family, a fighting family. He's not really been tested in the ring yet. Yeah, Jake Paul, you know, he's had some, he's had some decent tests in there, and he's just got that power. And when you've got that power, it's one of them things where it's like getting hit by lightning. You know, you could be winning the fight, and you get hit by that one shot, and it's done. So it does make it a more interesting fight now. It is actually a 50-50 legit fight. Uh, so yeah, I am looking forward to that. You know, the the purist in me is saying Tommy Fury is gonna fucking box his head off, job done. But you know, realistically, this could go either way. And uh, yeah, I want I want Tommy Fury to win. But yeah, anything can happen in this sport, and and that's that's why it makes it so interesting. <laughs> What I really want to see is an MMA fighter. People are slating MMA now. He's beat Asker and he's beat Woodley twice. You know, let him fight somebody big who is a much more skilled striker. So you've got uh, people like Anderson Silva, but he's getting on a little bit now. Um, you've got Johnny Bones. Get him in with John Bo Johnny Bones, yeah? John Bones Jones. Somebody like that, I think, destroys him, you know, because Johnny Bones is got all the same athleticism youth and he's got the skill as well so i think that will be a nightmare for him johnny bones needs to do it for mma okay so final little thought um these guys back to the start what i said at the start these guys are bringing eyes to the sport eyes to the sport means money to the sport Anybody involved, that money's going to filter down from the top to the bottom. So you never know, you might be fighting on their undercard. You know, it's all bringing more money into the game. So if you're a fighter, it's a good thing. Whether you like them or not, it's a good thing. Make sure you're promoting yourself if you're a fighter. Marketing is massive. Run it as a business. That's what it's all about. This is the fight business. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Let me know your opinions. Everyone's got a different one. But that's uh, me for today. I'll see you next time. Oh! <laughs>